hello and welcome to another episode of the pharmaceutical calculation solve along in this video you're going to take a look at two osmolarity calculation questions and i had already live streamed this session but i think there was a lot of feedback and echo so i'm just going to do it again because i believe it's better to have a very good quality session so that you can actually use it when you're preparing for your exams and so what you're going to do is i'm going to start off with the question and i was this two questions are part of a five-part series and by the time we are done with all those questions you should be completely comfortable with solving osmolarity type questions so let's get right to it the question actually says or the first question says calculate the osmolarity in milliosmoles per liter of a solution containing 0.5 milli equivalents per milliliter of sodium bicarbonate round to the nearest whole number do not include units so the first thing we want to do actually is go ahead and start off with the equation and the equation states milli osmoles per liter which is the definition of osmolarity is actually equal to weight of substance in grams per milliliter divided by the molecular weight times the number of particles times 1000 so that is the governing equation and we already been given the molecular weight to be 84 so the next thing that we need to find out is the number of particles now we have sodium bicarbonate which essentially is NaHCO3 and when you put this in an aqueous environment it's going to dissociate into the sodium cation and the bicarbonate anion so your number of particles is your number of species and we notice that we have sodium and bicarbonate so the number of species or the number of particles is going to be two the next thing that we actually need is the quantity that will go in the numerator here grams per milliliter and so what we actually need to do is make use of this information the concentration here milli equivalents per ml and we need to get that into a mass quantity so the connecting factor is going to be your milli equivalence equation so even though we are doing osmolarity you need to recall milli equivalence and what we have here is milli equivalence per milliliter is equal to milligrams per milliliter divided by molecular weight times the valence so we have the molecular weight but we need to determine valence and so for valence when you have sodium bicarbonate it dissociates into the sodium cation and the bicarbonate anion and so valence is the absolute of either the charge on the cation or the charge on the anion and so absolute of positive one is one and absolute of negative one is one and so your valence is one so what we can then do is we can put in the values into this equation and we will end up having the 0 0.5 milli equivalents per milliliter being equal to milligrams per ml divided by 84 which is the molecular weight times the valence let's write that a little bit legibly divided by 84 times the valence which is one so you can go ahead and solve for milligrams per milliliter and that is equal to 0 0.5 times the 84 divided by one and that gives you 42 now notice that the 42 has units of milligrams per milliliter but we need it in grams per liter now i can tell you that the 
numeric value will stay the same, but for completeness, let's just go through the conversion as well. So you have 42 milligrams per milliliter. A thousand milliliters gives you one liter. And a thousand milligrams gives you one gram. So the milligrams cancel out and the milliliters cancel out. But note also that the thousand also cancels out. So essentially what you have is going to be 42 grams per liter. So we can put all of this information back into the equation. So milliosmos per liter is going to be equal to 42 divided by 84 times 2 times 1,000. And that's going to give you 1,000. Now, by the way, if you have any questions, just put them in the chat or in the comments, and I'll try and get to them as soon as I see them. Now, if this was on, let's say, a NAPLEX board exam, you want to pay particular attention to the conditions in the question. So here it says round to the nearest whole number. So we did that and do not include units. We also didn't include units. Okay, so the one the thousand is what you want to put into the answer box. Now this is one way to solve it. I'm going to show you a different way to solve the same question because there's another approach which may be fairly easier for some people. So to do that, what we need to recall is the, the definition of milliosmos. So milliosmos is actually equal to millimoles times number of particles. And it's important to make a distinction between osmolarity and milliosmos. So milli osmolarity is a concentration. It's milliosmos per liter. And this milliosmos is just the quantity itself. So if you divided this quantity by a volume quantity, like liters or milliliters, then you have a concentration. And you'll be having milliosmos per liter, which would be osmolarity. Now, because we are going to be using milliequivalents, we also need to put down the milliequivalence equation. So you have MEQ being equal to millimole times the valence. Now, you will notice that both equations have the millimole term. And so we could basically divide both sides of the milliosmos equation by a volume quantity like milliliters and do the same thing for the milliequivalence equation. So we divide the left hand side by milliliters, divide this by milliliters. And the whole rationale here is to make it so that we see that the millimoles per milliliter occurs in, this, in both equations. Now, why is this significant? So what it means is wherever we see millimoles per milliliter, we could substitute this equation in there once we make millimoles per milliliter the subject here. So what that actually will look like is for equation, let's number them, equation one, equation two. For equation two, we can make millimole per milliliter the subject of the equation, and that would imply that you have milliequivalents per milliliter divided by the valence. And let's call this equation number three. Let's call this equation So let's call this equation number three. So we are going to substitute equation number three into equation one, wherever we see millimoles per milliliter. And so that would actually indicate that you have milliosmoles per milliliter being equal to milliequivalents per ml divided by the valence, 
and we can go ahead and put in some values so our milli osmos per milliliter is going to be equal to the 0 0.5 divided by 1 but we are putting it into equation one so we're going to multiply this by the number of particles and we'll do the same here and the number of particles is actually two so we end up with one as the answer but our answer which is one is a milliosmos per milliliter but the question is asking for milliosmos per liter so we need to do one more step which would be a quick conversion so we have one milliosmos per milliliter, and we convert the milliliters to liters. So a thousand milliliters is one liter, and that will give you one thousand. So we end up with the same answer as we did in the alternative approach. Okay, and once again. Round to the nearest whole number, do not include units, and so we don't include units, and this is a whole number. So that's the first question. Now let's take a look at the second question. And so this is the second question. It says, calculate the amount of milliosmos present in 25 milliliters of a 5% weight by volume potassium gluconate solution. Round to the nearest hundredth. Do not include units. So what we do is we start off with the osmolarity equation. We have milliosmos per liter. And that should be equal to grams per liter divided by molecular weight times number of particles times 1,000. And so we have the molecular weight, which has already been given to us as 234. And what we need next is the number of particles. So we need to take the molecular formula, which is C6H11KO7. Now, when you put this in an aqueous environment, it's going to dissociate. And what I noticed is a few students have issues dissociating this compound. So let me share a useful trick. It's a potassium gluconate is a salt. And it's going, it's going to be made up of a cation and an anion. So what is a useful trick is to be able to identify what the cation is. And your cation is normally going to be your group 1, group 2, group 3 elements. And so in this example, potassium is your cation. So you pull the potassium out, K, and it's plus 1 because it's a group 1 element. And everything else becomes your anion. So we end up with C6. H11O7 minus. Now we are interested in the number of species. So you have potassium and you have the gluconate anion. And so you have your number of particles or number of species actually going to be two. So number of particles is two. The last piece that we need to put into the equation is actually what's going to go in the numerator here, which is the quantity in grams per liter. And that information is going to come from the concentration. So in this one question, we are also referencing our knowledge on percentage concentration. And 5% indicates that you have 5 grams in 100 ml. 5 grams of potassium gluconate in 100 ml of solution. But notice that we need the quantity in grams per liter. So we need to determine how many grams we present in 1 liter and the liter is a thousand milliliters. So we saw for X, X is going to be equal to five grams divided by 100 milliliters times 1000 milliliters. The MLs cancel out 
then you end up having 50 grams per liter. So this 50 is going to go into the numerator there. Now what you will notice is anytime you are moving from percentage strength to grams per liter, you can actually simply move the decimal one place to the right. Okay, so that's a useful trick because this is always going to be grams per liter. If you've been given a percentage, just move the decimal one place to the right. So let's go ahead and put in the values into the equation. So we end up with milliosmos per liter is equal to 50 divided by 234 times the number of particles, which is 2 times 1,000. And that should give us 427.35. All right, so one thing we need to bear in mind is that 427.35 is actually the number of milliosmoles present in one liter. But the question wants us to figure out how many milliosmoles is present in 25 milliliters. So we go ahead and we solve or we put together a new proportion, which would be 427.35 divided by 1,000 milliliters. And that should be equal to some quantity in milliosmoles divided by the 25 milliliters. So you also have a milliosmos here. So you solve for x, which is your unknown. So x equals 427.35 milliosmos times 25 milliliters divided by 1,000 milliliters. And that ends up giving 10.68. So one of the things that typically happens is being able to combine various concepts into one question sometimes can be problematic. And so this is where the practice becomes very useful and pertinent. So in this question, we reminded ourselves on how to determine number of particles. We also looked at the percentage concentration. So you want to review that. And then also, we make sure that we are following the conditions in the question. So round to the nearest hundred. There will be two decimal places and do not include units. So this is the first part in a, a series, a five-part series to cover the what I think are very good essential questions for you to be able to master osmolarity calculations. Now, in case you want to jump ahead to be ahead of the game in terms of the questions that we will be taking a look at, you can actually see these questions here. So just take note of the um, URL. So rscalculations.com slash quizzes or osmolarity calculations quiz. And the 10 questions here is what we are going to go through so that you become very comfortable with um, how you would actually be able to answer these type of questions. So it, this is free. Just go in there and work it out. So we've done two out of the 10 questions and we'll do two each time we meet um, for the next five sessions. All right, so thank you so much for watching. And I don't see any questions in the chat box or in the comments. So in the future, if you do have questions, just put them there and I'll address them. Thank you so much once again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.